Okay, so 4.3, question number three. What we have is we've got f of x equals now log base of one-fifth x plus four. And we want to try to graph this. So if we want to try to graph this, what do we know about that four on the inside? That four is inside the operation. So that 4 is then going to slide the graph, what? It's positive 4, so it's going to slide the graph back then 4 units. Now, this is a logarithm, okay, and we look at our base. What is our base? Well, our base, in this case, is 1 fifth, so that's our A. And when we look in the back cover of our textbook, there are two different logarithm graphs. There's one that goes up from left to right, and there's one that goes down from left to right. So which one are we going to be using? Now, what's our base? Okay, our base is a fifth, right? This one is when your base is bigger than one. So that would be like the, the first couple, where your, your base was like two or three. The graph would look like this. However, ours, our A is what? Our A is a fifth, right? So that means my graph is going to look like that. So just a generic picture of it, because we know that one fifth is going to be in between zero and one. Your graph will look similar to that, right? It's going to look like that. So the basic shape should resemble that. Now, where do we begin? We know that we're going to have to slide this graph, what? Back four units. Now, normally, we have a vertical asymptote right there. So we normally have it at zero. Ours is going to have to be slid back four units. So when we slide it back four units, I do what now? It should be in, in, in that packet four, two and four, three. I don't know if you have that one or not. That was last week's homework. So if you don't have it, I've got an extra one. I don't know if you've got last week's homework or not. But. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got one up here, too. Okay. So we, again, we're graphing and looking at the logarithm graphs, so we use the back cover of our textbook, and we know the picture should look similar to this. So what I always do is I do a quick sketch over to the side, and that is just an idea of what it should look like. Now, ours has to be slid back now four units, so that means that we have a new vertical asymptote at negative 4. So we slid it back 4 units. Now we know our graph is going to resemble that. So let's go back and look at our picture again. When we look at the logarithm graph, the first point is there is right there at, at 1, 0. Right? Now that is one unit from the vertical line. So ours is not going to be at 1, 0. Ours is going to be at minus 3, 0, because it's 1 unit in front. Okay, so we'll put the minus uh, 3, 0 right here. So that's our first point. And then what's another point? Well, then we can use, what's our base? 1 fifth. So we also need, if this is 4, we also need to take away a fifth from that. And if I take away a fifth from that, go up one, it looks like I've got another point right here, and that's going to be at minus four. We'll add a fifth to it, so that's going to be minus three and four fifths, comma, one. There's my second point, and when I connect them together, we know it should resemble this. You can do more points if you want to, but you really don't need to because all you really need is those two points 
and that's going to be the basic shape of your graph there. Does anyone all right with that? Does anyone kind of see how that's working? So again, just two points is enough. You can do all three. The textbook has you do all three, which is fine, but you really only need two. You can do three, but two points is enough as long as you're careful and kind of connect them together. And again, why is it opening down like this and not, not up the other way? Because my base is one-fifth, and one-fifth is between what? Zero and one. So that's, that's why the graph is going down, not going up. If the base would have been five, it would look like this. Question six. Question six, we want to rewrite this as a logarithm. this up so we can see it so I'll try to keep that graph on the on the pic, on the page as well so this is what we want to find we want to convert this to a logarithm so let's write up our our formula so what's our formula well, y equals log base a of x that transforms and it can be transformed either way into x equals a y right that's our change of base formula so right now, it's in terms of an exponential. We want to rewrite this as a logarithm. So if it's in terms of an exponential, we need to watch how things are, are written. This right here, this one-fourth, that corresponds with the x. The two, well, what does a two represent? That represents your a. And then the minus 2 up here, well, that represents then your 1. So we've got all the pieces labeled. And now we can rewrite it as a logarithm. So as a logarithm, what's it going to look like? It's going to look like minus 2 equals, because that's your y, log base a, and my a is a 2, of 1 You see how I labeled it. So don't try to make them more complicated than what they need to do. It was as an exponential, I think what got you was it was in a different order, right? This one fourth was on the on the on the right instead of on the left. But you label it as your x, there's your, your base a, and there's your power y. Transform that into your logarithm, and that's all you need to do. So that's all I wanted to see is that you can transform it into a logarithm from an exponential. Question eight. Okay, question eight. We're going to be using our calculator to work this one out. When there's different ways of, of working this one out, but we're just going to use our calculator. So we can either use the automatic memory button in our calculator or we can write the number down each time but if I'm going to use my calculator and we did a couple of these not not quite the same but very similar if I was going to use my calculator here this is log base 10 and as long as it's log base 10 then we can use the log key in our calculator and again I'm going to use two different calculators so you can see how it's done so the first thing I'm going to do is this. So that's 3, hit your log key. That's that. We'll store that. Then we're going to take 100, and we're going to hit the YX key. And we're going to recall what we already have written there. So we're going to come out, and that's going to give us then our answer, which is 9. Let's use a different style of calculator. Many of you have this calculator. If you have this style of calculator, what does it look like? Again, first thing I would do is I would do the logarithm. So I would hit, this one's a little bit different. You'll have to hit the log key first. So the log key is here. Log of 3. 
Okay, we'll store that. This one's actually a little bit easier. Then we hit our 100. We're going to hit our caret key. Right? And then remember down at the very bottom, in that blue is the answer. So that stores it. And that brings it back. And that gives us 9. Or you could just do this. Or you could just do this. If you want to just write it down, you can do it this way as well. Let me write it first here. Log of 3, which is that. And we could take this out to four places should be enough. 7, 7, 1, 2. Okay. If you want to write it down, you can. Actually, that's five. That's, that's more than enough, so five places. And then you could just use your calculator and just write it down and work it out. And either way you get the same 8.999 or about 9. But the answer for that one should come out to be 9. You can either write it down or you can use the memory functions in your calculator. So you can either write down the logarithm here and then do your power or you can keep it all in your calculator and use the, the memory key. Did we have any others out of 4 or 3 to look at? Before we move on and look at, at the next section homework. Anything else? Okay. If we don't have any other questions, then I'll go ahead and pass out the next homework packet. And this will be due after our fall break. I'll go ahead and pass out our, our next homework packet. And this is going to finish up chapter 4, which is our logarithms. Sorted out here. Okay. What we're going to be looking at today, then, is we're going to be talking about the change of base theorem. So we're going to be looking at 4.4. Now, 4.4 is nothing but using the calculator. So 4.4 is pure calculational. We're going to be using our calculator to evaluate down different bases. And we're also going to be using some of the properties of logarithms as well. So we're now going to look at 4.4. And we're going to talk now about logarithms and how to use the change of base. There are two main logarithms that we work with, the two common bases. If you have just a logarithm and there's no base, if this has no base, then it is base 10. So this is the same as log base 10. We don't write the 10, okay? It's like square root. We don't put the, the 2 when we talk about a square root. We understand that it's a square root, not any other root. Same thing with a logarithm. If they don't put a base, then it is log base 10. And we talked a little bit about log base 10 last time. And log base 10 is built into your calculator. And so log base 10 is going to be built in. Do I need to push the screen back in? Okay, yep, just want to make sure. 
Um, another common base is log base E. If you have a log base E, that is the same as LN. And LN, this is called the natural log. So a lot of times when I say the natural log, I'm going to be saying ln. And if you look on your calculator, okay, there are two log keys. There's a log base 10 key, and there's a natural log key. Natural log is used a lot in statistics for modeling of population, radioactive decay, Predator-prey modeling, they all use logarithm, and that's log base E, or ln, the natural log. So if you, if you hear me say the natural log, that means ln. Now, how do we handle logarithms that have a different base? Well, if we have a logarithm that doesn't have a log base 10, or a log base E, then we have to use what's called the change of base theorem. So we have to convert it to either a natural log or we have to convert it to a log base 10. So here's the change of base theorem. And I'll, I'll give you a page number so that you have it. And this is in 4.4. And this is going to allow us to change any logarithm that we have into a log that we can work with. And this is on page 482. And this is the change of base theorem. Okay, so this is going to be our change of base theorem. And it says that if I have log base A of X well, I can convert that into log base b of x over log base b of x. And normally what I use is I use log base 10, or I use the natural log. So we're going to learn how to convert these. And, and again, normally I use log base 10, or the natural log. Those are the two most commonly used logarithms. So let's learn how to use the change of base theorem to evaluate down the following. Let's find log base 4 of 16. So I want you to find log base 4 of 16. Well, we cannot use our calculator because this is not base 10. It has to be base 10. If it's not base 10 or base E, the natural log, then I can't use my calculator. We have to use the change of base. And so how the change of base works is we just rewrite this as the log of 16 over the log of 4. Now, I don't put the tens here, but this is understood, again, to be log base 10. Because log base 10 is in our calculator. So how would we evaluate this down? If I wanted to evaluate this one down, with our calculator, I use my change of base theorem. Okay, and all I have to do is just type it in. So I have log of 16. And I'm going to divide that by log of 4. And that is going to then give me a value of 2. Easy enough. We're going to do several of these. Let's try another one. How about log base 1 half of 8? Well, if I want to change this one, now again, you can either use the natural log 
or you can use log base 10. I'm going to use log base 10 for the most part just to be consistent. But you could also use the natural log or any other log. But the two we commonly use are natural log, ln, or just the plain logarithm, log base 10. So if I rewrite this one, then this would be log of 8 over log of a half. And we can use decimals here, right? Half is 0.5, so this would be the same thing as saying log base 8 over log of 0 0.5. And again, we use our calculator and we break it down. And so we need log of 8, and we're going to divide that by log of 0.5, and that then gives me negative 3. Simple, easy enough there. So that's how we use the change of base theorem. So this is going to allow us, instead of rewriting them as an exponential, this is going to allow us now to convert them into something that we can use our calculator with. So we just have to convert them to the common base 10. Or again, you could use the natural law. I generally use base 10 because that's, just to be consistent, what we use in our calculator. Now we can also use this to work with pH, and we can also use different properties of the logarithms. The most common examples that we use of the properties, which I'll write them up, are going to be the power one. Now, we talked about the power one last time. So we've seen these a little bit. We didn't use them much, but in some cases, you might have to use these properties. And these are actually back in the previous section. And here's some of the properties. The most common ones that we use are going to be the powers. Bringing a power down, or just knowing that if the bases are the same, that it gives you one. So here's some properties that we use once in a while. When we multiply in logarithms, we can actually split this up into addition. So if you have, and we don't use these very often, but sometimes they are helpful. So if we have multiplication, then we can split that up into addition. Now division is the same. Log division becomes subtraction. We used this property last class period, which works with powers. And I'll just be consistent with the, with the labeling here. Remember, we talked about this one. This is the one we used last time. Remember, you can bring a power down. And so if we have a power, then what I can do is I can just bring that power in front. And then that's going to let me evaluate my logarithm down. Another property we use once in a while is log of 1 is always going to be 0. So that's just a common thing. Log, log of 1, no matter what the base is, any base is going to be 0. So it's just something we have to remember. And then the last one is if your base and your value inside are the same, if these are the same, then that comes out to be 1. So these are properties that once in a while we're going to be using. We don't use them very often. The, the one that we're going to use more than anything else is this one. If we have a power, we can bring it down to the front. So we're going to be using some of these properties, and we're going to be working with logarithms, and we're going to be talking about how to use our calculator to evaluate down pH. That's what we're going to look at first. So we're going to talk about what pH is and how we can use our calculator to break up the pHs. And sometimes we may use these properties. We don't use them very often. Again, the key one that we use is this one, bringing powers down. That is more common than any other. 
So in many cases, we're going to be bringing powers down. So let's begin with the applications, and let's begin by looking at pH. I'm going to talk about what pH is, and then we'll work through some examples. Now, when I talk about pH, pH is the number of hydronium ions. That's what pH is. So pH is just defined to be the, the concentration of ions. And I know there's some in the homework here where they talk about, I, I gave you some of these as well. I thought they were in the textbook also. I know there are some. Oh, let me get in the right section. That helped. So when we get in the right section, we'll pick some of these out of our textbook to look at here. We're going to start again with the pH because I think those are um, a good place to start. Now, when we talk about pH, pH is how acid or how base the concentration is. And our definition of pH is this. pH is minus log of H3 or positive. Now, this is the number of hydronium ions in something. Bless you. And what is pH? Well, pH is how acid or how alkaline or basic something is. Right? Now, the, the lower the pH, that's the more acidic. So, it always ranges between 0 and 14. 14 is the, is the highest it can be. Actually, 1, not 0, because you can't go to 0, but 1 is the lowest. You can't ever actually get to 1 either, but 14 is going to be our highest. And what pH represents, again, is how acid or how base something is. Here's your pH scale. Now, when we start talking about anywhere in the red, Anything between 2 and 3 or below that, those are going to be highly, highly acidic. Soda pop is right about here. Some orange juice and grapefruits, they're right here. But if we start getting anywhere near the 1, that's like hydrochloric acid. And that's something that if I spilled it, it would eat through the floor. Water is right here at neutral. Tap water should be right about 7. 7 is right in the middle, and 7 is neutral. And what these are is this is a measure of the number of hydronium ions. Now, if we get anywhere near the 14, that's going to be the opposite end, and that's going to be like lye, like drain opener. And if we have drain opener, what happens if we, had, if we spill drain opener on our skin? It burns your skin, right? So this side is highly alkaline, highly basic. This side is highly acidic. It has to be between 1 and 14. Right in the middle is water. Now, we're going to learn how to convert these back and forth. I can look at the number of hydronium ions, and I can convert them to a pH, or I can go the other way. But this is our formula. Our pH is defined as this, and it's log base 10. Now, a small change is a large change. It's 10 times as much. When we go from, let's say, a 3 to a 2 on the pH scale, that's 10 times as acidic. So big changes are represented by little changes, and that's how logarithms work. So we're going to look at some of these, and we're going to be calculating our pHs. So we're going to do two of these. We're going to do 30 and 32. We want to convert these from the hydronium ions into the pH. Now, the hydronium ion concentration, that's just measured with the machine. Now, let's think about both of these. Let's look at 30 and 32. If I talk about limes, what do we know about limes? Limes are highly acidic, right? So where do you think they would fall? They're going to be less than what? Less than 7. What about... Sodium hydroxide, well, that is like lye. That is the drain opener. Where should it be? It's on the opposite end. That one should be closer to 14. Now, if you take a physical science class or a, or a chemistry class or maybe even a physics course, 
you would spend a lot of time talking about pH. We don't in this course. I just show you how to calculate it. But in a chemistry class, you do a lot with pH. So let's look at 30. And we're going to use this formula right here to convert it. So let's look at question 30. And we're going to be looking at lines. And we've got a hydronium ion concentration that we're going to be using here. Okay, and we want to convert this into a pH. So this is, right here, the H3O positive. So that's what that is. Now we want to apply our formula here. And it is log base 10. So let's see what we can do. I want to try to find the log, I'm oh, sorry, minus log of 1.6 times 10 to the negative second power. Okay, now, what do we know about the value here? Well, we know that the value should be what? The value should be less than what? Less than 7. Now, you can either use scientific notation in your calculator to work this out, or you can use the properties of logarithms to work this out. Either way. I'll show you both ways, just so you can see how you can use the different properties to break it up and make it work. Let's use our calculator first with scientific notation. So what do we have to do? We're going to use our log key and we're going to do the insides first. How would I write this in my calculator? Well, I type in that 1.6 and then you see how it has the double E key. I know it's hard to see. Every calculator is a little bit different, but it has that double E key and it's in a different color. You'll type second E and what do we want for our exponent? Negative 2. So then you type negative 2 and hit equals. Okay, and that's going to be what that is in standard notation. We just converted it from scientific notation to standard notation. Now we just take the log of that. Okay, so our log is here. And again, we want second answer. And we can write the number down. Okay, you can either use your calculator or you can do it all at once. You can write it down. What does that give you either way? Okay. Now, don't forget to change your sign. So when I change my sign, it comes out to be positive. And we want to round this to the nearest tenth. So this would come out when I change my sign to be about 1.8. And that's what we would expect. Okay, because we would expect that to be less than what? Less than 7. Closer to 1. And it is. Again, if you wanted to, you could just type it in your calculator here as a decimal. Log of that point zero zero one, and work it, and and change the sign and work. Oh, I don't have enough zeros here. I think we need uh, one less zero, so it's going to be point. Well, one point six root second ln negative two. I'll just do that. Yep, I got too many zeros. If you just type log of 0 0.016 there, that's going to give you the same result. And why do we change it? Because there's a negative in front. That's always change your sign. Well, uh, pHs are always positive, and they're always between 1 and 14. So that's one way of doing it. Another way would be to use our properties of logarithms here. Well, this is multiplication, so I could rewrite this as this. Yeah, I don't need an extra 10 there. Okay, so I could write it like that, right? 
Okay, I'm going to show you're going to get the same answer. Because this is multiplication, and I can split up multiplication into addition. Now, what else can I do? Using our properties, we talked about this property last time. I can bring the negative down, negative 2 down. And now we can just work it out this way. You're going to get the same result. It may just take a little bit longer to get the same result, but you will. Okay, 1.6, we'll take the log of that. Find our log key again, 1.6, and that is 0. Point, we'll take it out three places, 204 minus, okay, and what about here? What's log of 10? Well, there's no base, but it's assumed to be base 10. If the number and the base are the same, that's 1. Right? Log of 10 is simply 1. And 1 times a negative 2 is a what? Negative 2. And if we subtract them, right, we have 0 0.204 minus 2. We get the same minus 1.796. And if we round, it's going to give you the same what? 1.8. So you can either use scientific notation in your calculator, like I did here, or you can use the properties of logarithms to break it up. Either way, you get the same result. It's exactly the same. It just depends upon which way you want to work it out. You either use your calculator, or you use the properties of logarithms. So let's look at a couple more of these. We're going to look at um, we're going to look at that lie. Now, what should lie be? Lie is a base, right? It's an alkaline, so it should be closer to what? It should be closer to fourteen. So when we work this one out, it's going to be now closer to fourteen. So let's look at question thirty-two from our textbook, and we'll convert the lie. So lie has less of a concentration. So lie is 3.2 times 10 to the negative 14. Okay. So this, again, represents the H3O positive. And that's the hydronium ions. Again, take a chemistry class. You're going to do a lot of these. So I want to try to find the negative log of that. And I'll work it out both ways just so you can see you get the same result. It's actually pretty easy. Either way. Just use this calculator, same thing. Either way, what are you looking for? Either style calculator, you are looking for this double E, right? It's either here or in there, okay? But you want that double E. And you type your number in first, so 3.2, just use this one, E, and it puts that up there, 14. You switch your signs. Now, what do you want to do? You want to take the log of that, right? So we hit our log key, and then we change our sign and it's in scientific notation because this is one and you can either convert it or you can just do it in your head mentally and that's going to be a pH of 13.5. You can do it all at once in your calculator. How else could you work it out? Just as easily I can convert it. Because that would come out to be a minus log of 3.2 plus log of 10 to the minus 14th power. That minus 14, what can happen with that? That comes down, right? And so that then becomes minus 
log of 3.2 minus 14 because it comes down. Log 10, we did this one a moment ago. Log of 10 is 1 because it's the same base. Now we can just subtract them and you're going to end up with the same result. 3.2, we hit our log key. Minus 10, or sorry, minus 14 there. That comes out to be that. Switch our signs, and we get the same if we round 3 point, or sorry, 13.1. So either way that you look at it, you can either use your scientific calculator with that scientific notation and work it out in one step, or you can use the properties of logarithms. They're about equivalent on difficulty and time. It, once you get used to it, this way is probably actually faster. So that's how we use pH. Now, what other things are on the logarithm scale? Well, pH is another example of something that's on the logarithm scale would be sound. Decibel scale, that's, that's logarithm. Um, also, earthquakes. So let's look at question um, 65 here. And we're going to talk about earthquakes and how they are done. So question 65. And this is on page 486. The magnitude of an earthquake is measured on the Richter scale. And it is log base 10, so that's, that's just your log, of I over I naught where I is the amplitude registered on a seismograph, 100 kilometers from the epicenter of the earthquake. And I naught is the amplitude of the earthquake of a certain size, a small size, and we want to find the Richter scale rating. So they have a small earthquake and they compare it on the, on the scale to a larger one, and it's compared by a logarithm. It's log base 10, so every time we go up a number on the Richter scale, it's 10 times as much. So if you went from a 4 to a 5 on the Richter scale, that would be a 10 times as powerful earthquake. So we've got to keep that in mind. Now what they want you to do is they want you to compare them. So let's talk about an earthquake that's a thousand times the magnitude of a really small earthquake. We'll just do part A. And then we'll do some others after that. But, but let's look at part A. So let's write up our formula. And this is our formula for 65. And this again is on page 486. And here's our formula for earthquakes. And earthquakes again are on the logarithm scale. And it's log of I over I naught. Now, we want, and we're going to do part A, we want a thousand times as powerful. So, I've got an earthquake in comparison to a smaller one, it's a thousand times as large. A thousand times as powerful. What would that be in terms of the Richter scale? So, I have an earthquake that I know. And we're going to compare it to one that we just felt. I naught is always a fixed value. Because the earth is always shaking anyways. So there's always earthquakes happening. Um, it's, just, it's just what we feel right now. And we're going to compare that to the earthquake that we felt. It's a thousand times as powerful. So that's going to come out to be a smaller number in the logarithm scale. So we want this. So let's rewrite our, our logarithm here. And this is our I. So when we talk about our logarithm, we want to talk about log of i. i is a thousand. i naught, that's your initial, over your i naught. Okay, and those can cancel. So that's just log of a thousand. And if I have log of a thousand, it's a thousand times as powerful. But on the, on the Richter scale, log of a thousand would only be three. So that would be a magnitude 3 on the Richter scale. It's a thousand times as powerful. It's basically no shaking, the natural shaking of the earth. But on the Richter scale, it's only a magnitude 3. When we talk about magnitude of larger earthquakes, we talk about magnitude 4s and 5s. 
So if, if it was a magnitude 4, that would be 10,000 times as much. If it was a magnitude 5, it would be 100,000 times as much. So a large change is a small thing on the Richter scale. And same thing with tornadoes. Now let's look at 67 using the same formula and the same setup. So question 67. On February 27, 2010, an earthquake struck Chile with a magnitude of 8.8. .8. So it's a really powerful earthquake on the Richter scale. Express this reading in terms of I naught to the nearest 100,000. So we're going to work the other way. And we're going to talk about how to convert the other way. So here's our formula. And this is our Richter scale. We're going to use the same formula. We just have to work it backwards. So your Richter scale... is going to, again, be log of i over log of i naught. Okay, that's what we have to find. Now, what is our Richter scale going to be for this one? If we look at 67, it's an 8.8. .8. So that's what we've got. Now, how would we figure out what the I would be? We need to find out what the I would be. How we do that is we have to take it to the power of 10 because it in, it's the inverse. The opposite of a log is log base 10. And so if there's no number there, it's the same thing as, as, a, as a log base 10. So if I wanted to work this out and then come up with the right ratio, how I get rid of a log is I have to take it to the power of 10. And whenever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And that's going to clear out these logs. And what is that going to be when I take 10 to the 8.8 .8 power? It's going to be a huge number. Okay, So 10 to the 8.8 .8 power would then be this. Would then be 6.3096. And that's going to be times 10 to the 8th. And that's in terms of I naught. Because when I rewrite it, I would just multiply by I naught, and that would give me my I naught. Now, what would that be in terms of a whole number? How would I write this in standard notation? Well, this is the 8th power here. So this means I'd have to convert it. And I'm going to have to move this 1 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So look at the size of the number now. Make sure we've got the right number of zeros here. I know. That is how much more powerful that earthquake is. It is what there's... 630 million times as strong as the no shaking because the earth naturally shakes. So when you have an 8.8 .8 on the Richter scale, it is a huge difference. And even going from a 7.8 to an 8.8, .8, it's 10 times as much. It makes a huge, huge difference in the power. Right? It's not a thousand, that's only a three. And so on the Richter scale, three is a thousand times as much, but an 8.8, .8, that's huge. That's a very, very devastating earthquake. It's that much times the initial no shaking, the small shaking, because the earth naturally shakes. So it's a huge, huge difference. And that's why it's so important when they classify earthquakes, they classify it to the de decimal point. Because when you go from like a, a 5.1 to a 5.2, so that's a big, big change. Not a small change on the Richter scale. It's a big change. So that's why they can classify it all the way down to the decimal point. We can also use logarithms to talk about um, 
sound. Sound is, is measured the same way. Okay, so sound is also measured as a ratio. It's on the decibel scale. But when we talk about sound, we use the decibel scale, and it is also done as an initial condition. So we'll look at, at one of these from our, our homework here. I'll do question nine. Or not nine, we'll do ten. Because ten is, is the Richter scale. We'll do, uh, so yeah, ten, nine's the Richter scale, we'll do ten. Ten is a decibel scale. Because we just did nine, or one like it, right? That was the Richter scale. Ten is very similar. Logarithms are are used for the decibel scales, how we talk about sound. So when we talk about the decibel scale, it uses this formula. Very, very similar again. So this is our, our decibel scale. And this is going to be from your homework. And this is homework 4.4. We're going to look at question 10. Now, what's the difference between the Richter scale and the decibel scale? Well, we have that 10 in front. So it changes the, the, the calculations a little bit. But it's still based upon an initial value. So we want on this one, when we read it, we want to find our, our um, noise intensity. So the decibel level D of a sound is related to its intensity, I, by this formula. If I naught is 10 to the negative 12th power, then what is the intensity of a noise that measured 93 decimals? We want to express your answer in scientific notation, rounding to three decimal places if necessary. So what we have here is we have a decibel of a reading of 93. So we have a sound meter, and we read 93 decibels. So we read 93 decimals there. And we know that I naught It's 10 to the negative 12th power. And we want to find out I. So I is going to be how many more times powerful it is. So we want to find I. So let's plug in our values. We've got 93, that's our decimal measurement. We've got a 10. We've got log now of I, which we don't know, over 10 to the negative 12th power. And we want to go ahead and work this out. And we want to find out what I is going to have to be. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by 10. It's going to clear that out. That way we can deal with the logarithm by itself. That comes out to then be 9.3 equals log of i over 10 to the negative 12th power. So that's what we've got there. Now, how do we get rid of a logarithm? And we've talked about this a little bit, but how do we get rid of a logarithm? We use the opposite. Now, this is log base 10. So how we get rid of a log base 10 is we use the power 10. That cancels out that logarithm. And so if I do that, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I'm raising both of them to the power 10. That's going to clear that out. And that's going to give you 10 to the 9.3 power. And that equals now i over 10 to the negative 12th power. We need to go ahead and finish this out. How will we finish this out? Well, we can cross multiply. We want to find our i. So we're going to go ahead and cross multiply here. And when we cross multiply, what's going to happen? 
You just cross multiply, and that's going to give you 10 to the 9.3 power. Cross multiply that times 10 to the negative 12th power. And that equals our I. Now, what do we know about these? Are these bases the same? Yeah, so we can add them together. So now we have 9.3 minus the, the 12. So 9.3 minus the 12. And so that gives you then a minus 2.7. And that in your calculator would be as a decimal. That's going to come out to be then 0 0.001 if we round. How far does it say to round here? Uh, it says rounding to three significant digits. So you want to find the intensity of that noise. And you plug in our values here. We found it all to come out to be 0, 0.00 if we round three significant places would be two. So that's your initial value. So that's what it would be. And, and again, that's just how they relate to each other. It's so small because when we talk about decimals, the small value went to a large value. All right, so let's try one more of these. A little bit different. They're all a little bit different. And then we'll talk about how to use um, the, the different bases to work things out. So let's, I'll do another one of these from your homework. Let's do question 15. These aren't bad, they're just using the calculator. And once you kind of understand how to use the calculator, they're really not hard to work out. But let's do 12, or sorry, 15, if I can say it right here. So we're going to look at 15, and we're talking about quail. And quail are game birds that fare poorly when their habitat is encroached upon. Wildlife biologists have discovered that the population P of quail and this region is related to the percent that have been, uh, of the percentage of the, of the parts that have been paid by parking lots and roads. So the more, more part of it that's paid by parking lots and roads, the less habitat the quail have and the less quail you've got. Okay. X is the percent of the region that has been paid. So how much of this part has been paid? And the more of an area that gets paved and, and humans move into, what happens to the quail population? It goes what? Down. And for a particular rural region, P is, I believe it cut it off there, I believe P is supposed to be, um, we'll use 10. So P is, I'll just make it 10. So P is going to be 10 when X equals 0. We want to predict what the quail population will be when it becomes 6%. And we're going to round to the nearest whole number. So we just make that 10, because I know it cut it off there. I want to use the copier. What do we want to find? We have to find our K. And we're going to have to use a logarithm here as well. Now, when I look at this, here's my formula. It says... We have zero to start with, so we're going to start with zero. And when we start at zero, then my population P is going to be 10. And, and I know it cut it off, but it should be 10 then, so we'll just make it 10. So that's my initial population. Now we can work this out. So we'll plug in our values, and we've done these before when we talked about variation. So 10 equals K times the natural log of 30 over 0 plus 4. And let's work this out. How do we find this in our calculator? Well, 30 divided by 4, we'll do that first. So 30 divided by 4, that comes out to be 7.5. So 
That's going to be our value there. Is everyone okay with how I did that? Right? We just broke it down. How do we use our calculator? Well, again, depending upon the type of calculator, you have either an LN key like this or an LN key over here. Somewhere on your calculator, though, depending upon which type you're going to have, you're going to have an LN key. So let's go ahead and just take our natural log of that. And that comes out to be 2.014. Well, if we round, we'll do uh, 2.014. We'll round that to 9. Okay. And that equals 10. So we'll divide by our 2.0149. And that gives us our value of K. Kind of like what we did with the variation. It's, it's very similar to what we did with variation. And that comes out to now be 4.96. Well, maybe if we round here, 3, 0. So this is kind of like what we did with our variation, where we had to find our k. Now, what we want here, all right, is, is we want to change it. So we want to change the percentage of, of the region that's paved. We want to change it from 0% to 6%. So that means we want to find out the value when we pave 6% of that habitat. So people are moving in to a place that was never ever inhabited by people before, and they pave 6% of the roads. If we pave 6% of the roads, how many uh, quail would we have left? Well, let's plug in our values and find out and see. So if I plug that in, we've got P of 4.9630. Uh, we've got log, natural log here, of 30 over... 6 plus 4. That is then going to give us a 10 down below. Let's use our calculator here. Once we've gotten to this point, it's easy. Okay. 6 plus 4 is 10, and 30 divided by 10 is a 3. So how many... Quail would we expect to be in the area? Well, we'll just use our calculator. And we've got that value there. We're going to multiply that by natural log of 3. And that then gives me 5 if we round point four five. Close enough. Okay. And when we round it to the nearest hole, that's going to be close enough. I, I think they probably gave you a population of like 10,000. We'll use population of 10. I know it cut it off in your homework, that's why I did this one. But that's all we have to do is plug it in. So we went from a population of 10 to a population of 5. And why is that population decreasing? Because we're encroaching on their land. Building roads, houses, people move in. So 6% of that is now paved and became a city. So there's obviously less quail. It is done on the logarithm scale. And the, the more paved that, payment that we have in the region, of course, the fewer quail that they're going to have. Okay, so let's make sure we've covered everything. There's lots of applications. I think that we've covered everything, though. Let's look and make sure. Um, I'll work out question eight on your homework as well, just to make sure we know how to use our calculator. It's an easy one, but just to make sure we know how to use our calculator. How would I do this one in our calculator? Well, you can either use your properties of logarithms, or you can just use the calculator, either way. I'll show you both ways. So 569. Multiply that by 24, we get that. And we need the natural log of that, right? 
And how many decimal places does it say? Uh, four decimal uh, four decimal places somewhere it says. Uh, yep, uh, four decimal places. So that would be 9.521 if we round 9. You could also write that as this. You could rewrite this as natural log of 596 plus natural log of 24, and you would get the same result. You can split it up, or you can just use your calculator. Either way. Sometimes you might have to use, especially with exponentials, you might have to use this way. You might have to split it up. And that comes out to be 6.34. Uh, if we round 3, 9. And then we'll do log of 24, natural log of 24. And that's going to be 3.17. Eight, one. And if we add those up, what do we get? We get the same value, right? It's going to be very, very close. It might off, be off by just a little bit due to round off, but not much at all. Eight, one. And that gives me the same 9.522. And it's very, very close. What's the difference? Round off. Either one. They are the same. So in some cases, you can just use your calculator. If you want to do it that way, you can. Just multiply it in the calculator, write it down, use a natural log key, or you can split it up using your properties. Now, 60, 70 years ago, we would have to do it this way. You'd have to, to split these up, and then you'd use a table and look each one of these up because you wouldn't have something this large in your logarithm table. But it's... a a lot different now than it was, again, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. We have calculators that can do it all. So we don't have to do all the breaking up of the logarithms as much. So that now should have finished up 4-4. Four, four. I do want to cover a little bit, not much, but a little bit out of 4-5. Because we're going to have to finish up 4-5 next time. But I do want to go over at least a couple of these questions because 4 5 is going to take us a little bit of time to go through. Now, 4 5, we're going to be learning how to solve logarithm equations. And sometimes we use the change of base theorem, sometimes we might use the converting from an exponential to a logarithm. And in other cases, we might use our properties. Okay, so let me pick a couple of these, just at least a couple of them for us to work with. So let's look at, um, on page 497, we try to pick one that's like your homework here. Um, how about we look at one that's got a natural log... How about we look at question number 63. We're going to talk about how we can solve this one out. So question 63. And some of these are a lot more difficult to solve than the others. This will at least get us through the first couple of questions. Okay, let me see if it's going to equal. Okay, so 63. That's going to equal now natural log of 25 minus x. So how do we approach something like this? Now, this is all logarithms, right? And we need to find x. Now, how we do that is we need to get both sides to be natural logs put together as one natural log, and then we can apply an e to both sides because e and a natural log cancel each other out. They're opposites. So the first thing is I, I, I want to combine these into one logarithm. So these are addition. Now, earlier in the previous one, 
Remember, we had multiplication, and that split up into what? That split up into addition. So now I want to convert these into one logarithm. So this is addition, so it can become then multiplication. So those can get combined together. So in logarithms, it's a little bit different. Addition becomes multiplication, and division becomes subtraction, or vice versa. So if you have addition, we can put these together into one logarithm. Now, why did I do that? I did that because to get rid of a natural log, I use an e. And whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. Okay, so e clears out a natural log. So whenever we have a natural log, we use base E. So we got it together, and what's going to happen here? Well, if we use the E to both sides, that makes that go away, and that makes that go away, and now look at what we've got. Now we have 7 minus X times 1 minus X equals 25 minus X, right? Because those went away. The natural log and the exponential number e, they cancel out. Now I can finish this, and I can finish it by doing what? Foiling it, setting it to zero, and factoring. So let's go ahead and, and foil this out. Okay, so we'll go ahead and foil it all out, just like we normally would. So first times first, that's a seven. And then we've got seven times a negative x, so that's a minus seven x there. We've got negative x times 1, that's a negative x. And we've got negative and negative, that makes it a positive x squared. We can now combine, and that's going to give me then x squared, minus, when we combine, 8x plus 7 equals that 25 minus x. And we've done a lot of these. We've done a lot of them, we can go ahead and set this to 0. So we'll move that 25 over, and we'll add x to each side. And now we have x squared. Let me put those together. We've got a minus 7x, and then we've got 7 minus 25. That's a minus 18, and that equals 0. Now, all we have to do is factor. So now we'll go ahead and factor this out. First times the last. That's a negative 18. And what two numbers would work? To give me the minus 7 in the middle. Can someone tell me? Multiply together to give me 18. Subtract from each other to give me 7. I will give you a hint. 9 and what number? 92, okay? Negative 9, positive 2. Now we can factor this down. And now we have x minus 9, x plus 2 equals 0. That gives me then x minus 9 equals 0, so x equals 9. And x plus 2 equals 0, so x equals now a negative 2. Only one of these is going to work, though. If we go back to our original, we have this. Again, these logarithms sometimes are difficult to solve and think about and work through. So this is our original. Now, we can never have a negative number in the logarithm. So then we, you cannot take the negative of any number for a logarithm. If you try it in your calculator, it's not going to work. Like, for example, here's negative 18. If I try to take the logarithm of negative 18, it can't happen. It gives you an error. It's like division by zero. So when we look at these, if I plug in 9, 9 is not going to work. Why not? 
because 7 minus 9 makes it what? 7 minus 9 makes it a negative 2. And can you take the natural log or log of any negative number? No. So this one will not work. What about negative 2? 7 minus a minus 2. That's going to be 7 plus 2, which is 9. That works. 1 minus a minus 2. So that's 1 plus 2, which is 1. That works. Same thing over here. 25 minus a minus 2 makes it positive. You can do that. So the only answer that we're going to have is going to be what? Negative 2. The 9 doesn't work because when you go back to check, you cannot plug in a number to make a logarithm negative inside. You cannot take the log of a negative number. It doesn't work. So you've got to watch those and be very careful with them. Do any others? Let's do a, another quick one here so we can do some more of these homework questions. And we'll pick another one just so we can get through at least a little bit so we have less to do next time. Um, we'll look at an exponential and how to solve it next. So let's look at another one from our textbook here. How about question 12? And this one shouldn't take long at all to go through. 496 here, question 12. And we want to find the value of x. And there are different ways of doing this one. We need to find the value of that x, that exponential. Um, what we're going to do on this one is we're going to rewrite it. And different ways of writing it, you can either turn it into an exponential or you can use a logarithm. Because we can, we can bring that down as a power. Let's do a logarithm. And you can either use log or ln. They're going to be the same. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So let's take a log of both sides. And see what happens. And you can use either log or an ln. It doesn't matter as long as you're consistent. Why did I do this? Well, logs have this unique, unique ability that I can then bring down what? Bring down a power. So that one then comes down to b x log of 5 equals log of 13. We'll divide by our log of 5. And that gives me then x equals log of 13 over log of 5. And what would that come out to then be in my calculator? Let's try to use our calculator here. I'll try to work this out. What would that be in my calculator? Just using the calculator. That's going to be 13 log divided by 5 log. And that comes out to then be 1.59. Uh, and we'll go ahead and round this to three places. 1.59 if we round 4. Close enough. I think we've got enough time to maybe do one more. So let's do one more quick one here. Let's look at one more, just like your homework. I'll just work out the homework. We'll do question five from your homework. And this will be the last one. And I know logarithms, sometimes they can get confusing as to what to do. And you've got to be careful with your properties. But I'm going to work out question five here. So I'm going to work out question five. We've got three to the three x minus three power equals 24. Well, what would we want to do? Exactly the same as we did before. We want to get rid of the powers, so we're going to take a log. 
And what can I do when I do that? Power can come down. So this is then going to be 3x minus 3 times log base 3 equals log of 24, right? Just bring your power down. Now, divide both sides by the log of 3. And that gives you then 3x minus 3 equals, using a calculator here, log of 24, divide that by the log of 3, and that comes out to be 2.89 if we round um, 3, close enough there, 3 places is going to be enough. We can finish this then by simply adding the 3 to each side, so we'll add 3 to that, 8, 9, 3. We'll divide by our 3, and that's going to give me my final value of x, which is now 1.96 if we round 4. Close enough. And they want it to the nearest uh, thousand, so we'll add one more place. How about we use a 2? Close enough. If you're off a bit, that's okay, because every calculator is a little bit different on the round off. But that's what I would expect to see. So let's talk about our homework and what we've done. And then I'll pass out the sign-in sheet, and that'll be it for today. So for the homework, what have we done for the homework? You should be able to do that first section, which is 4.4, you can do them all. 4.5, you should be able to at least try 1 through 5. So try 1 through 5. We'll finish them up next class period. I do have the sign-in sheet. I'll go ahead and pass that out. And then I've got quite a bit of back homework, too. Here's the sign-in sheet. Here's the old homework.